Incredibly, just when the Bigfoot seemed to have been cornered, it ran up a hill, jumped into a large orange tunnel that appeared out of thin air, and disappeared. The entire tunnel immediately vanished as well. It seemed as if the being had created an opening in the fabric of space and time at will, and then, as soon as it had crossed over, shut the door behind it so no one could follow. If true, this mind-bending phenomenon is proof positive that whoever serves as interdimensional doorman at Skinwalker Ranch is in complete control. As well funded as Bijalawa's study of the Skinwalker Ranch was, as the 1990s drew to a close, the team of investigators seemed no closer to getting to the bottom of things than when they had first arrived. From the very beginning, former owner and current ranch hand Terry Sherman had insisted that the research should be approached like a hunter stalking white game. He believed that since whatever was behind the phenomena was obviously watching their actions, any overt show of cameras and other instruments would make the unknown force go into hiding. Terry advocated employing as much stealth as possible, only using minimal equipment, and setting up discrete viewing posts far away from each other. The NETS researchers did not follow this advice, however. Instead, they installed cameras all throughout the property, set to film just about every square inch of terrain 24 hours a day. But just as Terry had feared, as soon as these cameras were put in place, the camera shy skin walkers made themselves scarce. In one area that had previously been a hotbed of activity, a total of six sophisticated surveillance cameras were installed. Previously this location had been beset by almost all of the standard skinwalker activity, including cattle mutilations, flying blue balls of light, strange aircraft, and the infamous portals that opened up over the horizon. The six cameras were set to film every section of this paranormal paradise 24-7. But just as Terry had feared, all of this equipment seemed to make the unknown force go dormant. After several months of filming, Nothing of any significance had been captured on tape. Before the cameras were installed, many members of the research staff had personally witnessed bizarre phenomena taking place. But as soon as the cameras went up, the game was over, and the power behind the skinwalkers decided to lie low. For about a year, everything was so low-key that some began to think that the presence that had been haunting the ranch had simply moved on and left the area for good. The silence was finally broken on July 20, 1998, when Terry Sherman, who was on duty at the command and control center, was made aware of an unsettling occurrence. Half of the cameras tasked with filming the terrain had been knocked out simultaneously. It had been storming heavily the past few days, so Terry naturally assumed that there was some kind of electrical failure due to the rain or thunderstorms. He went to inspect the downed cameras to see the damage, and found that while the cameras were indeed damaged, it was not by lighting. To his amazement, he saw that the three cameras which had gone offline had all of their wiring forcefully ripped out. It looked like a bad case of vandalism or sabotage, but the fact that the equipment had been so expertly torn asunder from 15 feet in the air made that seem highly improbable. All of the cameras were positioned atop 15-foot wooden poles, so any conventional saboteur would have had to scale the poles to rip out the wires. Climbing up a narrow pole and holding onto the smooth wood while tearing out the thick wiring would be a practically superhuman feat. The wires had been held in place by thick PVC pipes that ran down to the foot of the poles, but all of these had been expertly detached. Each of the three disabled cameras had been afflicted with identical damage. The other three cameras, however, remained completely operational, and so the NIDS group turned to them to find out just what had happened. Fortunately, one of them had been pointed directly at one of the sabotaged cameras. The investigators immediately replayed the video from the time that they believed the vandalism had occurred. But incredibly, as they watched the footage, they could see absolutely nothing out of the ordinary. Perplexed, the researchers sent the tape to a lab in Las Vegas to have it digitally enhanced. The enhancement revealed the red recording lights on the damaged cameras, 
and this proved to be important, because the footage indicated that all three affected cameras had switched off simultaneously at 8.30 p.m. But still, there was no perpetrator to be seen. The only conclusion the NIDS researchers could draw was that whoever had damaged the cameras was endowed with the power to render themselves invisible. One person who had no trouble believing this incredible theory was Terry Sherman, for this was not the first time he had witnessed the camouflage ability of the skinwalkers inhabiting his ranch. Both he and his son had seen it firsthand in 1996, shortly after the Sherman story was published in the Desiret News, and just as paranormal enthusiasts were beginning to take note. One such enthusiast arrived unannounced at their door in June of that year, asking to spend time and meditate on the ranch. Terry was slightly amused by the request, so he went ahead and gave permission, thinking that nothing would come of it. Picking a pristine pasture near the woods, the man began to meditate just as he had said. He stood in the middle of the clearing, raised his hands toward the heavens, and with his eyes closed tight, began to focus on his inward being. While he was deep in this trance-like state, a sudden violent rustling of trees came from the woods. The man, lost in his meditation, did not seem to notice, but the Shermans watched the disturbance with increasing alarm. To their astonishment, they saw an almost completely invisible figure emerge from the trees. Due to a strange, pixelated effect, as if sunlight was being directed around it, the entity was so blurry that they could just barely make out its outline as it crossed the field in broad daylight. As they watched in stunned silence, the camouflaged being picked up speed and ran straight toward the meditating visitor. Before anyone could quite process what was happening, the entity stopped right in front of the visitor and erupted into a roar of aggression. The meditating man fell to the ground in shock at what he was seeing and hearing. After the deafening roar, the semi-invisible entity simply turned around and ran back into the woods from whence it had come. Coincidentally enough, Terry and his son watched the Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jesse Ventura film, Predator just a few months later and was struck by similarity between this real-life entity's capability and that of the fictional character in the film. In the movie, the alien predator uses an advanced cloaking device to make itself invisible. Were the entities on Skinwalker Ranch utilizing a similar technology? Is that how they managed to dismantle three complex surveillance stations without being seen and without being recorded on the remaining cameras? It just might be, because scientists now believe that such means of camouflage is not as far-fetched as previously thought. Researchers all over the planet are currently perfecting methods of bending sunlight over objects in order to render them invisible. If we are beginning to master this technology ourselves, then it should not surprise us that another, far more advanced intelligence would have developed such capabilities as well. Perhaps it was such advanced technology that made it so easy for the paranormal denizens of Skinwalker Ranch to stay one step ahead of Bigelow and his associates. Towards the end of the NIDS era at Skinwalker Ranch, the most frequent intruders were not of the paranormal kind, but of the bored teenager kind. The ranch's notoriety had begun to attract trespassers and thrill-seekers with some regularity. In 2006, one of these trespassers was unidentified flying object enthusiast Ryan Skinner, who had first learned of the ranch by accident. Skinner had been on a road trip with his girlfriend when he happened upon flying orbs very similar to those seen on Skinwalker Ranch. After he returned from this harrowing first encounter, he found out that his car had been passing through the vicinity of the ranch at the time. Intrigued by what he had seen, Skinner was determined to go back. He had always been searching for a place to hunt the paranormal, and Skinwalker Ranch seemed to have his name all over it. He began to make frequent nighttime trips out to the property, and on many of these nocturnal forays he met with the strange glowing balls of light. During one of these encounters, Skinner was hidden on a ridge watching as the objects seemed to be observing the cattle grazing below. The surrounding lighting suddenly began to flicker before going out completely. Shortly thereafter, 
the door to one of the trailers next to the grazing cattle was flung open and a security guard came crashing through it with a litany of profanity. The guard made a beeline for a transformer box and fiddled around for a minute or so before the light snapped back on. The most interesting thing about this is that Skinner saw one of the balls of light turn its attention away from the cows and fly over to the guard. According to Skinner, the ball of light hovered right behind the guard as he worked without him ever realizing it. After the guard went inside, the orb hung in the air over the trailer, as if it was thinking about what its next move should be. Then it darted off to join the larger group of orbs that had been slinking around the ranch. Skinner's account seems to verify that as much as NIDS attempted to document and verify all of the strange happenings on the Skinwalker Ranch, the phenomena were always one step ahead of them. It was this very fact that led the scientists at NIDS to come up with perhaps the most startling conclusion of all, that they were dealing with a precognitive intelligence. Many have erroneously asserted that paranormal activity at the ranch disappeared when the scientists arrived. But it didn't. It merely changed its tactics. NIDS saw very much the same phenomena that the Sherman family did, but the activity was so randomized and erratic that they could never capture any hard evidence. If cameras and other data collecting equipment were placed on one side of the property, the manifestations would just shift to the other. Those involved became increasingly aware of an extremely selective intelligence at work hampering their investigation. This intelligence would pick and choose who it revealed itself to and what times and places the manifestations would occur. But most startling of all, it seemed to be able to predict the actions of the NIDS crew before they were implemented. If you moved left, the phenomena would move right. It knew what you were going to do before you even dreamed up the action in the first place. Before you even thought to move your right foot forward, this strange precognitive intelligence was already registering and tracking your movement. The NIDS scientists assert that it is for this reason that they were never able to get any hard data on the phenomena of Skinwalker Ranch. Now, you may be tempted to think that that's merely a handy excuse for their distinct lack of results. But before you start scoffing, you may want to consider some of the stranger things that quantum physicists have learned about the very fabric of our reality and how we perceive that reality. Because one of the major discoveries of quantum physics is that at a quantum level, things actually do change and react to our own observations. As hard as it may be to grasp such a strange concept, the veracity of this theory has been proven time and time again in laboratories all around the world. It has been found that at the quantum level, light waves can spontaneously become particles and vice versa, as well as move from one location to another simply because they are observed. If these fundamental building blocks of reality change upon observation, how much more could other aspects of our reality bend and adjust as we observe them? It was actually Colonel John Alexander who coined the phrase precognitive sentient intelligence with regard to Skinwalker Ranch. During the Vietnam War, Colonel Alexander, the inspiration for the George Clooney, Ivan McGregor, Jeff Bridges, Kevin Spacey film, The Man Who Stare at Goats was part of a special forces unit attempting to create super soldiers through metaphysical exercise.